But we start with the Magpies. They've got some real problems and they dominate the agenda tonight. Even Nathan Buckley was seemingly a little lost for answers afterwards. Yeah, after tonight, there's enough evidence there to suggest that you know, we, we need to change something up. As I said, whether it's personnel, system, um, preparation, um, stripping it back in, in some ways, and, and we'll do that. A lot to take in there. Oh, I've listed these things. Our personnel, our system, our preparation, stripping it back. So I don't think Nathan had the answers there after the game. I think he, he stuck with the same 22 the week before. Uh, that didn't work for him. Now he's got to look at, is it my system? Do I need to bring in youth? Do I need to strip things back? Have I overcoached them? Is has the he preparation run of, right? Has he run out of tricks with them? And does he have the burning desire to turn that team around long term? Well, I can't answer the second one, the burning desire question, but uh, I, I, I'm fascinated, Kane, by what they do this week. I think the bigger picture is there's uncertainty everywhere. Uncertainty mm. from the top down. Who's our president? Who's going to be the coach next year? Are we close? Are we not? Do we need to play the kids? Do we just try and keep going for another two or three weeks? A lot of questions to be answered in the next fortnight. And one of those is around list management. I think the heat's got to come on them. And I've got some sympathy whilst we will criticise Nathan Buckley and he'll be the one that is under the spotlight. Their list management has been horrendous. I want to go back to the trade period and have a listen to their CEO, Mark Anderson, their list manager, Ned Guy. We think, you know, if we're going to be a genuine premiership threat, that we needed to pick up some good young talent to fill the needs that we've identified. We do need to get into the draft this year where we've identified that there's some really good quality talent. The opportunity is now for some of the younger guys who we rate really highly on our list. So we're actually really excited that it's, it's time for the young guys to, to get their opportunity. So there's the reasons why they tip out Trelaw and Phillips and Stevenson. But let's have a look at exactly how they sit in terms of who they played on the weekend and where they sit in the competition. They are... The oldest, oldest team in the competition, they're second for games played. Look at the Giants who they lost to, seven players under 10 games. Where are these young guys that they were so desperate to tip out some quality players to get in and play, Sam? Yeah, I mean, they've clearly got some older players on their list, which I think skews that a little bit. But they've already debuted two players, Kane, in, in four weeks. They'll have a third with Finn McRae on the weekend. That's three in five. I mean, you talk about playing the kids. They are starting to play the kids. I, I think this is, without simplifying it too much, that... The, the trade period they've had the last list. couple of years is coming home to roost. Oldest I mean, they got list. within a kick of a flag in 18. They just fell short in, in 19. I don't think there are too many people internally at Collingwood that are actually surprised as to what's happening on the field. Well, they're still playing the likes of Hoskin Elliott and Roughhead and, and these types of players. If that was the reason to let go of the quality that you let go of and not get anything for them... Well, so it, was, it was money as well, though, Kane. They put themselves in a precarious position. Yeah, like, but, they had but to when, you, when you make comments like that and you're the oldest list in the competition for round four, clearly that is a topical point. Where do you think they think they were at the start of the year, Hutch? Where do you think Collingwood believes? So they, they played one great final, lost the final the next. Do you think yeah, they no, thought they were still close? I think they thought they were still mm. close, yeah. Mm. I think they thought that... I mean, I think Eddie said they hoped, he'd hoped they'd contend still as late as his last press conference. That was a real wake-up call in the weekend. You can't make a case for them being a player in this season from here. The illusion to the Giants, that younger team... I know teams have a bad game, but they've got some real problems and they're not getting much. They've got a lot of money tied up in very few. One of them is Dugowie. Inevitably, there's going to be some question marks around Dugowie into this season. They're not going to get in the return for effort on the cash game. Yeah, it was highlighted by him going up against Toby Green, a player that he is in comparison with and should be playing as well as. To see them go head-to-head -head on the weekend and compare him to players that he should be coming along like... For me, he's not fit enough. And you look at some breakout performances But that's not new year. news, right? They, no, still, it, it, they still put the money into him. Six years, of... Hutchie, 25 years of age, 100 games. He's finished top 10 in the best and fairest once. And in terms of the ranking points, top five on the ground out of 102 games five times as he finished in the top five of that. So he is not delivering to what he is expected and wants to be paid. He's got to get fitter and he's got to really look at himself because right now he's letting Collingwood oh. down. I would agree with that, and the figures don't look great. And given how well Trelaw's playing for the Bulldogs, that doesn't look great. But Hutchie, at the end of last year, are you sitting here saying you would have traded to go and kept Trelaw if it was a money issue? Early signs aren't good on that decision, are they? There's a long way to go. But they put serious money into Dugowie on the hope he'll become a Dustin when all exposed evidence is he's not going to be that player. But I think a lot of people in their position would have made the same call. I mean, the flashes of Dugowie no, have I, been I, quite breathtaking. I, I can't have that. I, don't, I, I, can't, I can't comprehend the Trelaw. Why, why are you 
commit so much time, effort, energy to go and poach someone from another team, sign them, uh, build your fabric around them, put them in a documentary, back weight their contract, and then tip them out because you need to put the money in. I, I won't ever be able to get... It's poor list management. I won't ever be able to get... And how many players are they paying who aren't playing here? They've got paying Trelaw good money for five years to go. Yep, yep. Dane uh, Beams. Dane Beams is still being paid. This year, yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a spot there. And their forward line's an issue too. Yeah, and it, the way they move the ball as yeah, well. No doubt, Hutchie. So they've got issues off-field and also on-field. And we talk about the Pies' lack of flair. Let's take a look at the issues they've got. So marks and play on. In a game where the game is sped up, they're ranked 17th. In terms of getting it from deep defensive 50 to inside 50, 16th. Point four, 16th. Scores per improvise 50, 15th. They're not locking the ball inside forward 50 either, so that's 14th. And their inside 50 differentials is 16th. So it's it's a one-pace midfield and it's a forward line that's struggling. Just took a look at these entries. The, conserv sorry, yep. the conservative ball teams yeah. were the boom teams of the last three years. Are they all struggling, do you think? Is Colin just symptomatic of the change of the game? Well, they don't have you know, a, a forward that would worry. I think Jamie Elliott's been a big loss for them. Dugowie, when he's fit and at his best, is a worry. But they're still medium-sized forwards. Yep. Cox and Majacek isn't going to scare anybody. This is a team that got to a grand final only a few years ago, but they moved the ball much, much better than this. They moved the ball well in round two v Carlton, but it's it's gone backwards. So this is where Bucks is talking about system strategy. I think he's got to let go, Hutchie. He's got to let it go. And you talk about their forward line, Darcy Moore or Jeremy Howe. It's time to let the genie out of the bottle with Darcy Does Moore. Does he have the courage to give up something in his defence to gain something in his attack? Would you do it? Uh, I would. I would at least release one of them. I'm not sure which one it is because they're both stars of the competition in the defence. But for the sake of the team and winning games of football, Moore's the one. one of them has Moore's to the go. one, isn't he? Probably he, because of his he could, size. He could ruck as well. Yeah, and I don't think his numbers have been as good as everyone's saying. I think he has conceded uh, this, you know. I think he's, while he's had some great moments, Sam, he's also been hurt. Um, so could they, can they get by with... You know, having a better team defence, but having him in the presence in the forward line. I'd just love to see that, even if it's for a couple of weeks, to see if they can inject some life into this team. It's funny, though. It wasn't too long ago we were talking about Mason Cox and co tearing up the West Coast Eagles in a final. I mean, it, it has happened. I agree. They've been terribly, terribly inconsistent. I think they're in a little bit of a hole. I'm not willing to write them off this season. We, we it's have early. never trusted that forward line here on this panel. I know it won them a final. They, they can't win it with that forward line. No.